Yo, hi everybody, welcome back to the Bitcoin Day Trade channel. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about Git. GitHub in particular. What is GitHub? GitHub is a website where you can dump your Git project. And what is Git? Git is a is a protocol that programmers use to be able to work together on the same project. What they do is they commit a source code to, for instance, GitHub, and they can pull a source code. Whenever you pull a source code, you collect it, you can edit it, then you can commit it again. And I'm gonna show you how it works. At the moment, as you guys can see, I'm using Linux. Linux Ubuntu 16.04. It's a very nice operating system. My operating system, as I can show you guys, is Windows, but I'm using a virtual machine. This is also possible in Windows, but I prefer we're using Linux because yeah, Linux just feels better, you know? Let's go to GitHub and let's just check out GitHub as a website. Whenever you get to GitHub, you can create an account. Here you can sign up for GitHub. Just sign up like you sign up for any website. It doesn't matter. It doesn't cost you any money. Let's just, in my case, sign in. You can sign up. I'm working on a Fartcoin project, as you guys probably already know. It's a fork. Well, you can call it a fork. It's my way of rebuilding the Litecoin source. Okay, let's go to my profile. This is what my profile looks like. And as you can see, I have the Fartcoin project. You have different repositories and you'll be like, what's a repository? A repository is just a folder on your account. I have, for instance, here the Fartcoin folder. It is all the source code of my Fartcoin project. So whenever you have this source code, you can compile it yourself. If you're able to do that, you can make the wallet just like I did. But it's about making a project. And so once you have created your account, you can create a new repository, a new project. Project. I think it is that plus sign here. A new repository. So you go over there, you click new repository, and then it will ask you for a name. Let's just call it test. I don't know. You create the repository. Very, very easy. Once you have created the repository, you already have some interesting things here. You see, these are the command lines that you can use. So you don't even have to know all this stuff. They give it for free. It's a good thing to make a note of it. So let's do that. Let's just copy paste it. We are going to create a new folder and we call it the test folder. It doesn't matter that you call it test or something, it's just a folder for us, so we know. Double click on it. Let's begin by creating a new document, an empty document. Let's call it the readme. I think it is MD as they use on GitHub. And let's just paste the commands here. This is all about how to use it. We've created this readme with these lines in it. We're gonna push the readme file to GitHub. And we're gonna do that using the terminal. And the terminal is this script. So you can right click, click open terminal, and you get the terminal. And before you're able to use Git, you have to install Git. So the way we do that is say sudo. Sudo means that you want root access. So that's, you have a guest account, you have an administrator account, and you have root access. So root access, apt, get install git give it your password and it will download git in my case it is already done as you can see here no newly installed it's all there but once you have done that you'll be able to connect to github so how do we do this just like they say here here they say make a readme.md okay so this readme.md should be with capital letters so let's do that let's rename it press f2 to rename and read me like this let's open it again so we can see it again get the terminal back in our screen how do we do it? just follow this line just say git in it now it's initializing so now it knows that this folder that we just created this folder test is a git folder as you can see it initialized empty git repository in home desktop git this git over here is a hidden folder because hidden folders start with a dot if you press ctrl h it's gone and it's back. So that's how you show hidden files and folders. Control H. So what we do is, well, they say here in our screen, git add. We can do that. Then you do it file by file. So let's say we have two files, a new document, and let's call it testing.c++. Because we're using C++, we can do something else. It doesn't matter. If you would say git add readme, so copy paste, put it here, paste it. Now the readme file is added to what we want to commit to GitHub. We're not yet there because we need to make a commit. So git commit m quotation. So we're gonna keep it at first commit because it's our first commit. So enter. And as you see here, now they say one file has changed and there are six intersections. So that means these lines here are six new lines that aren't yet on GitHub. So we say our git remote, like they said here on the website, is test. And our account, my account, is the Fortcom project. In this case, we want to add the file to that repository on Git. It's just git remote add origin. 
and then http double dot slash slash github.com slash fartcoin project and then slash the repository that we just created test.git so we copy that we paste it over here we say enter and now it knows that this folder is connected to GitHub, but we still haven't pushed it yet. It's not yet on GitHub. If we go to GitHub again, we refresh this page, we will still see the same thing, you see? So the last thing we have to do is we have to push it, as they call it, git push. So we paste it here, we say push it, and then you have to put in your username, which is in my case the fart coin project and then you give it your password and now it's pushing it it won't take long because it's not a big project but if we go to the website now we refresh that page we see our readme you see as you can see here in the screen a readme file that is the name of the file obviously that we uploaded and this is that commit comment that we gave to our upload if i click on it this is our readme it looks a little bit different but that's because Git usually put lines together to make it smaller. If you want different things, you can use some tricks. We can change that locally. Let's do that locally, am I right? That's, that's a better idea than do it here online. What we can do is just go back to our repository. As you can see, we only have the readme file. We do not have the testing.cpp yet. I'm gonna teach you how to do that. The next time we're gonna push it to the website. Let's change this. This echo test readme, we don't need it. I know that this highlights stuff. So these hashtags give highlight tape. So we say this is a test readme. We can say to be able to use GitHub, use the following commands. And then we can say three times this. I don't know what this is called. It's here, the button next to the one. Three times here and one, two, three. I have to double push it. So now we change the file a little bit, as you can see. And this will result in a highlighted list. In top here, we have a highlighted text you will see it soon so let's push this to the website again so the thing we have to do now we don't have to initialize it again so we don't have to use this git anymore this git initialize the only thing we have to do is say git add so that's what we're going to do git add but instead of giving the names of the files that we have over there the readme and the testing we're just going to say do them all at all and then we say this is our second commit we can copy paste this well, you don't have to copy paste but let's change that name first commit let's just say we update it read me plus added extra file something like that all right now it says one file has changed maybe that's because in our testing isn't anything yet so let's just put a little bit of something in it let's say this is a test file save let's try it again let's push it again let's say git at all the same commit name and now it's one file change one intersection so okay they're changed a little bit we said commit them all we already know our remote because that's already written here in this git as you can see in this git file there's a lot of information and in this configuration in the git file you can see that it already knows that the origin is here so we don't have to add that again that's not important anymore we can skip this line now and we can skip that line now and what we did was instead of git add me can also let's say or git at all save let's do it again one more time git at all give it that commit it changed a little bit as you can see let's push this again to the website let's paste it press enter it will ask us again for our for coin project account it will ask for our password and you don't see your password obviously you don't see anything happening but you just have to keep on typing now we did something it was uploaded if we go back to the website now you will see if we refresh it we have two files. And do you see what happened? Now we have a highlighted part. That's because we had these three little hashtags. We had a normal line. Let me resize our screen a little bit because we want to see the original. And because of these three quotations that we have here, we have this small block. So they usually use this when they have commands in here to highlight commands, things you have to copy paste to your terminal to make stuff work. And as you can see here, the files were updated. We have our testing file here, the testing.cpp. We can see that this is a test file that we just created and we can see the readme. We can change them online if we want to. An awesome thing about this website is the commits. We can go back in time as you can see. So this was our first commit. And here we have a couple of changes that I made. I I did the commits. I didn't upload them, but he knew that I did the git commit 
first commit, you know, this is updated readme files. What's in here? Testing, let's see, be no changes. So you see, it saves everything. Here we have testing, this is a testing file. If we go back, the final commit, here you see, I changed something. What does this show? This show that here, we deleted this line, it's red. Here we added these three lines. Here we changed this line, and here we see that this part was added. So as you can see, GitHub is a website that tells you exactly what happened in the history of your project. That's why GitHub is very interesting for you guys. If you're a programmer, if you're a beginning programmer, just to be able to share with the world, just to be able to remember what you actually did, because your entire history will be on GitHub. That's mainly it. So these are all the commits that I did and I have a couple of repositories because I've been working on this project a while. I have for instance here my entirely unwritten, like nobody else wrote this. This was just me in my own. It's not a big part of script, but it's a small script to calculate the amount of coins that you get when you mine a block. And for every block there is a different amount and you can pre-calculate what your block is gonna give you. It's just, I wanted to show you guys this. So, that was it. Yeah. So I hope you guys learned something new today. I hope you guys did enjoy this little tutorial about how to use GitHub and how to push stuff in Git. And if you did, let me know it by giving this video a big thumbs up. I don't know why I crossed my hands, but thumb it up. If you're new to my channel, it would be awesome if you would subscribe to my channel because I make these kinds of videos every once in a while. And whenever I get new subscribers, I get motivated to make more videos. So yeah, it was awesome to have you guys here and I hope to see you guys in the next video. And as always, Whoa!